Exmoor National Park today, a hauntingly expansive landscape of moorlands, valleys and woodlands. Now my first plan of action is to hit some woodland photography in the morning at a location called Tar Steps. And then I want to slowly make my way down to the coastline for sunset to a location called the Valley of Rocks, which has some of the largest cliffs on mainland Britain. So fingers crossed, if all conditions align, I might come away with some keepers. Let's hope. So we're actually really early. I've got about 40 minutes until the sunrise. I can't believe how early I got here. It's only four degrees, so it's not that cold. So there's no mist, which is a shame, but this is probably just more a getting used to the area. This is new for me, this national park. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. Should be a good one. It's looking nice, it's got some real nice trees here. That's some beautiful looking trees. I really like that. I think it's in someone's field though. I suppose if you're a, a designated woodland photographer, you'd know every name of all these trees. However, I'm not. <laughs> so I don't know any names of any trees, unfortunately. I think they should do that in school, you know, teach us more about the names of trees and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of exploring to be done. I've got the whole day here and the sun is just coming up. I got here so early. I left at 5 a.m. It's a two hour drive. So we've still got another half an hour until the sun comes up, but it's nice to get here early. Just have a little scout out, but it's looking really nice. And we're at a location called Tar Steps. And it's these kind of um, stone steps that go up through the woods, I believe from the pictures I've seen. Yeah, it looks really nice actually. We've got some nice trees here. I'm hoping for kind of like thicker rooted trees. That's what I wanted. Because in Cornwall, the reason why I've come up here is because all the trees in Cornwall are very much like this, just thin spindly things. And I want some real thick woodland, deep rooted trees or forests. So, We'll see what we can do today. We've got the whole day. We've got sunrise and sunset and the whole day to explore. So I'm really excited. It's about five degrees. There's a little bit of haze in the, in the air, so that can help, but it's not a mist, which is a shame. But again, you know, this is a new area. So this is just about exploring it, finding compositions. If we get something, a bonus. If not, we'll come back. Woodland photography always feels very relaxing. So this is gonna be nice. And uh, yeah, it's just gonna be chilled out because we've got so much time. And I'm here so early. As you can see, it's already getting lighter and lighter as we speak, so that's good. Seems like a lovely little stretch of river. So I've upgraded my vlogging kit, well, my vlogging lens on my Canon M50 to a Sigma 16 mm wide angle, 1.4 aperture. So it's super bright, you can almost see in the dark. It gets a bit noisy around 1600, but anything under that, oh, it's amazing. And it's just got a bit more of that wide angle, even though it's a crop sensor, you're getting about 20 mil on it, which was bigger than my 52 mil, which is just too far cropped in. And with the body's image stabilization switched on, that crops in again. So you're getting about 24 mil, I think, or maybe 22. But yeah, it's perfectly good enough now for vlogging. So much more wide angle, getting more in the shot. So I'm really happy with this lens. Super clean, super nice. I sold the F52. It was just too cropped in. My head was like this, trying to vlog with your freaking head in the frame. No one wants to just see my big round floating head on the camera the whole time. So we're at the steps. The sun is coming up quick. So I want to try and get, oh, that's nice. Look at these colors here. Oh, that's bloody nice.
This is really nice actually. This one little area. I might try a shot here actually. Maybe shooting out this way actually. Let's see what we can do. Let's have a look. Oh, I quite like that. I think landscape. Hmm, that is nice. It's just, oh, that's really nice. I like the shape of them trees. If I can just get rid of the sky overexposed horrible sky the shape of these two trees are really nice they actually follow each other parallel you could do something with that and back down the path it's the best composition I can find really because you're not getting that sky. And you've got a nice leading line into that. I really like that, that's working well. So, I just want to wait for the sun to come up now and get a bit of light on the scene and then work with that. But that's the one, I think. I just can't help imagining what it would be like with mist. Can you imagine it? Oh man, you'd need to stay up here for a week. In fact, what I might do is shoot with my 70mm right over there. That's it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the 70mm right. I'm going for the 70mm idea. I think that's going to work a lot better. Close that composition in. We'll see how it looks. I don't know. I think the wide angle works a bit better with them steps. So, I've finally found the composition I'm happy with. It took about an hour, but I'm over the moon with this. And I had a quick search before I came here to see other people's compositions and I haven't seen one from this angle so I'm low down by the stones we've got them beautiful foreground mossy green stones the beautiful angles of these trees frame in the shot and you know you're in a river and you know there's a stone stepway going across so you kind of know what you're looking at it isn't just something completely picked out at random that is really nice obviously that white sign in the background will photoshop out but I'm thinking I'm going to do a three focus stack on this one. I'm going to push the boat out. I'm going to get some definition throughout this shot. This is beautiful. Really, really nice wintry vibe about that. Now I'm not too sure about this image. I was having to push a lot of things in Lightroom to get the result I wanted. And I just feel the colours are a little sickly. And that background, there's too much going on. There's no separation there. It really needs to lead into some kind of woodlands or something. So the background's over cluttered for me. Now, what would help that is mist. And that was all I was thinking about when I was at this location is this would really work with some mist. So I'm, I wouldn't post this image as my portfolio. It, it's a good composition. There's definitely a worthy return there but there's something going on with the light and I usually like to get 95% in camera and I, I really just didn't get that with this image and I always know because I'm just pushing things too much in Lightroom to get the result I want. So it's a worthy return, but yeah, I'm not gonna go posting this image. It's pretty cool, but not good enough. It's only like 8 o'clock and I'm already thinking about food. But I thought, before I go off to a calf, let's just have a further look down in these stunning woodlands. It is so nice here. Now the sun's coming up. Really beautiful. 
check this out how nice is that just look at this light we're getting that is phenomenal man this is some of the best woodland I've ever seen for photography Again, I'm just getting another shot, but I think it's a keeper. So I found another composition here that's really working. And it is very cluttered and there's a lot going on, but because of this like beautiful golden soft light, it's just creating this unbelievable scene that works because of that light. If we didn't have that light, it wouldn't work. It'd be too cluttered, but man, it just looks so mystical this is really cool this is the best woodland i've ever been to no one here oh this is so cool do you know what i think i'm gonna go for a full a, a wide angle get these trees in because these are really nice it's phenomenal now I have an absolute keeper. I am so happy with this image. I love the light, I love the composition, and yes, there's a lot going on, but that center image of them trees, they have such a unique defining shape to them that it works, I think. And again, we just had wonderful conditions, no wind whatsoever, so every leaf is in focus. And that's such an important thing with woodland photography, to have no wind. This is an absolute keeper. I'm going to post this one. I love it. So I found this really nice composition. Now the light is really shining through. And this path that just kind of meanders up into the leading line there. Yeah, I quite like that. See what I can do with it. That's really nice. God, this forest is stunning. Look at this. So much to explore. It's a bit overwhelming, to be honest. It's just so much here. But that is really nice. It's really glowing. That could work. And I think it did work. I think that's a real strong composition there. I really like the leading line of the path and the golden glow really made it feel surreal, wintry, cold and fresh. And I did a little bit of work on the foreground to darken the edges just to give the image a bit of a frame. And I also softened the image with a bit of declarity to give it that real surreal mystical feeling. But again, with no wind, I was able to get so much in that shot, so much definition. And I think this is a keeper. I'm definitely going to post it. I really like this. I think it's a strong composition. So that's really cool to get a second woodland image of the morning. Really, really cool. I don't think this image is as strong as the other two woodland images I've got but I still quite like it and something quite weird happened that I actually captured what I think is a fox in the shot or it could be someone's dog but I don't remember seeing anyone there so maybe that's a big fox <laughs> I mean it, it would be a very big fox when you think about it so I was on a 200 mil lens just 
so much to explore. So many little areas. Incredible. I've got to stay up here for two weeks. This is the thing, you know, I just need more time. <sighs> Maybe camp up here for a couple of weeks or something. Something's got to be done here. <sighs> and I didn't get wet feet. That's a first. Right, I think it's about time for some breakfast somewhere. I don't know this area, so I don't know where I'm going, but... And I really did not know where I was going. Just look at that expression of confusion. Which way? I don't know. But it's just me and you up here, buddy. Because there's no one else. You know what's really nice? No Cornish hedges! So you can see! Too many Cornish hedges! 10 miles high, you can never see anything. God, that's so cool being able to see the sea from up here, but oh my God, it's freezing. The temperature is dropping tonight, I'm telling you. I think we're gonna do some coastline photography now. And we'll go back to Cornwall down the coast that way, through Bude. Oh man, it's cold. But yeah, it's looking good. It's really cool being able to see the sea from the top of Exmoor, really good view. Oh, look at this, look how steep it is. Drive careful here. So I'm at Porlock Weir now, and I actually got a shot I really like using these posts as a leading line out, rule of thirds, shooting straight down them and getting a long exposure with the waves. I got absolutely soaked, but it actually worked. Just shooting exactly here where I'm positioned now. Now this was just a bit of fun to see if I could pull an image out of this area and I managed to find a rule of thirds to the right of that frame of the leading line into the long exposure whitewash and I think it works. It's not reinventing the wheel but it's definitely something I'm going to post. I quite like it. Oh that's nice. This is the little village Porlock Weir and Weir refers to the salmon stakes and traps that were situated along the shoreline and it's really nice to make a return to this little village and have a look around again. The last location of the day, the Valley of Rocks, so rugged and raw, absolutely spectacular, but I didn't get the sunset and light I was hoping for, so it's an absolute return. I've got to get back here, it is amazing. So, thanks for watching this episode, please subscribe, like and share. And I'll see you at the next location over an hour.